Hi, I'm Phnom. Hi, I'm Mardis. And we're the host of Future Future, where two designers talk about the future of everything. We're in the business of turning science fiction into reality for a better future. Today, we're going to focus on the big word of sustainability. Recycling is very difficult, right? A lot of us have, you know, two or three bins and we're about 50% sure that where we put our, our recyclables is in the right bin. We, we, we don't know, even us designers who make things all the time, we're not 100% sure sometimes because it really depends on how it's manufactured and what, uh, what city you live in. And uh, that's very confusing. It really is. When you start looking at products that we know and love, like cell phones and computers and things like that, and we, we consider recycling them, um, we do this because we want the next latest, greatest thing. The problem is all these products come in with a lot of different um, materials and different ways that they're put together. So today we're going to talk about a specific methodology that designers use called Design for Disassembly to help you uh, make a difference. So how would you define Design for Disassembly? Well, I think that's really about pulling parts, uh, products apart into separate pieces so you can put them into the different recycling bins. Sometimes they go, if you're a recycling facility, you don't just put everything into a recycling bin like we do at home. It goes plastics over here, metals over here, uh, maybe paper or organic materials over here, and they're all recycled but in very different ways. Let's parts. talk about parts. Yeah, parts. Well, it's interesting, if we take, about, take the uh, example of a cell phone, and it's, it's such a great example because everybody has them nowadays, whether it be smartphone, flip phone, whatever. They're made up of hundreds and hundreds of parts, if not more, but they're also made of hundreds of materials. Sometimes it's metal, it's glass. Metal here, glass here, plastic. plastic and all the stuff that's inside, a lot of different types of parts. Yeah, and then we, we're not even getting into the electronic, uh, what we call a PCB board, you know, all the chips and stuff sit on there. And those are all sort of um, uh, created in a form where they're all fused together. So the thing about uh, parts is that you can have a pure material part, let's mm -hmm. say it's made out of metal, you extract it, you recycle it, and it turns into something different, great. Easy peasy. Yeah, but if you paint that part, it's basically two materials bonded together. A recycling would be very difficult or impossible. Mm -hmm. So as designers, we recommend that, you know, as much as possible, you do not paint or, or uh, electroplate or, or other types of like surface treatments. Yeah, it's really, any of those post processes that you do, you have to kind of really think about them. Some aren't too bad, but many are. When you bond several materials together, it makes it very difficult to separate. And we call those materials, um, those parts, monstrous hybrids, because they are, they're kind of like bonded together and how do we pull them apart? And for example, you've probably heard of uh, plastic with wood fibers in it. They took, you know, um, shavings of woods from an industry and recycled plastic from another industry and merged them together. Great, The right? idea sounds fantastic. It does. Yeah. But then what do you do with that thing once you're yeah. done using it? You cannot recycle it anymore. So mm -hmm. an idea, an ecological idea is really a marketing ploy to make you buy something that sounds ecological, but actually it is not. Yeah. Um, and, and that's very dangerous. Yeah, one's a petroleum-based product, plastic, and the other one's a organic product, such as hemp or cotton or anything else that might go into it. So next we're gonna talk about connectors. Um, so these parts, they don't just float, you know, next to each <laughs> other, they're connected, and there are many different methodologies used for that. And most of the time they're glued together because it's cheap, it's easy to manufacture, um, and, um, you know, it's not heavy. And it's cheap. You know, we've even seen products uh, taped together. They're very heavy duty uh, industrial tapes. You would never know they're there, but they're actually hidden and attached to multiple parts and it keeps your device together. So here's the dirty secret about, about glues. If you have a plastic part, completely recyclable, a metal part, completely recyclable, and you bond them together with an adhesive, the whole thing is not recyclable anymore you have to separate them, you have to separate the glue. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why we recommend glues that are actually easy to, to recycle with 
those parts that are connecting, or use different types of fasteners. If you have screws that connect two parts together that you can unscrew after the end of life of the product, then you end up with recyclable parts. And there are other fasteners besides screws. Not everybody wants to see screws. Maybe we can have clips or pressure fittings or things like that that really help hold things together. But still, they're, they're generally kind of unsightly unless you really work them into the design. Um, and that is still one more thing that someone at a recycling facility has to remove and that causes problems. So there is another option though, right? Today we have connectors because we need to have a certain number of parts due mm -hmm. to the manufacturing constraints. But 3D printing, for example, allows us to create the same shapes with less parts. And less parts means less connectors. Mm -hmm. um, so let's use technologies that we have access to today um, to make that happen. Yeah, absolutely. So um, you know, 3D printing is advancing rapidly. And as it does that, we're starting to introduce these home 3D printers and manufacturing lines. And it's great because now you can start to print out these uh, features that allow you to either not have multiple parts or even if you do have a multiple parts, think about a Lego. A Lego block snaps together and it works out great. Uh, we can actually build those into the uh, manufacturing process now through 3D printing and other rapid prototyping technologies. So next, let's move to packaging. This is a great opportunity for people to have more say in the way things are recycled because packaging is not as complex as a film, right? Uh, you can actually disassemble things easily. Um, and also we can influence the way things are being made. Instead of using the same, you know, uh, varnished plastic, instead of using the same like window, perhaps we can use materials like pulp or mycelium, which is made from mushrooms. What else can we do? Well, removing styrofoams and those like toxic foams is a good way of doing it too. Um, those could be replaced with all kinds of like starch-based uh, foams. And uh, as you said, mycelium is great, which is sort of a fibrous material uh, that connects mushrooms and whatnot. Also, people need to tell companies to stop packaging tiny little products in gigantic clamshells, mm -hmm. let's say at Costco, because that's a waste of, of materials, a waste of perfectly uh, beautiful materials into something that is taken care of, like, that people look at for 10 to 20 seconds and then throw away. And we know why they do it. So when you're shipping things across the ocean to the United States or wherever you may be shipping them to, you know, they get bounced around and bumped around. They need to be protected, but there's plenty of other ways to protect things without, you know, encasing them in a clamshell of plastic or using those little metal and plastic twist ties, which by the way, are a monstrous hybrid because they're really, really difficult to get that little wire out of the plastic. Another reason why the packaging is so large sometimes is for theft reasons, mm -hmm. right? If you have a tiny little product, let's say an SD card, um, you cannot sell it in such a small packaging. People would just you know, shove it in their pockets and then walk away. So, but there's a way to use materials and geometries to prevent thefts without um, you know, digging out a bunch of oil and then turning it into something that people care about for, for so little. You can make plastics out of seaweed now. You can make plastics out of other, like they have a milk-based plastic, which is reusing old milk. You would never know it. It looks like a beautiful plastic, actually has some cool color options and things like that. But there's plenty of different opportunities now in our very advanced sort of um, chemistry and, and uh, manufacturing facilities. So, to close, let's talk about actionable items, the little things that you can do to make a difference. Not only to make yourself feel good, but to make the earth feel good, right? Mm -hmm. So first, um, every time we receive a packaging which is made of cardboard with a little plastic window, just separate the two, pull out the plastic window. That will make both parts recyclable again. Uh, and then next, next time you receive a box, a shipping box with tape on it, be sure to remove all the tape before you uh, throw the tape in the trash and throw the, the, the cardboard um, in the recycling bin. If there's any tape left, specifically if it's you know, plastic tape or tape using, uh, or an adhesive using a non-water soluble uh, material, um, it's not going to be recyclable. And then some of you are probably thinking about what do I do with my electronics? What do I do with my cell phone? Uh, a lot of these large companies like Apple, Samsung, etc., have recycling programs. Because these products are so complex to disassemble and to uh, recycle in the right way, uh, they do it themselves. They have created their own machinery 
to separate parts, to remove screws, to, um, to extract specific materials. So let them do the job, but in order for that to happen, you need to give it to them, not throw it in the regular trash. So I think what's really interesting here is I think that's beautiful. I love when uh, when companies do that and they really take a proactive role in helping recycle. But um, you know, not only recycling the product, what if your packaging that you received your product in is actually shipped back to the manufacturer as well. So it never makes it into the landfill or even into the recycling system. It goes right back to the manufacturer and then can continually live in this uh, sort of circular, circular economy of um, materials. Mm -hmm. So as consumers, we have voices, there's social media. You can complain about bad <laughs> habits that these companies and local administrations have. There are certain towns in, in this country where recycling just doesn't exist. You have to voice uh, your concern about the environment and about your role in making, in making all of this a lot more sustainable. Um, some companies you know, think of sustainability as an afterthought. Let's change the conversation and ma let's make it one of the first things that companies talk about when they talk about creating a new product. Um, it's not, you know, we do that every day as designers yes. with our clients. We want uh, our consumers to, to be aware of that as well. So uh, we are hardware designers, we're packaging designers. We've done that for a long time. Wow. This is just a small portion of what it takes to do good design, to do good product design, packaging design, etc. And we care about what um, falls into the environment. I mean, by definition, we, we create the product that go into the landfill and we want to reduce this as much as possible. This helps us, this helps you, it helps the manufacturer. We all want a cleaner, better working system, better water, healthier and happier people and animals. And so we encourage you to be creative and, and um, put some comments down there and tell us what you'd like to change, uh, what, um, what new materials you've discovered that you would like us designers to include in, uh, in uh, the products that we, we put out. And you know, as clients, as, um, as companies out there, if you want to revolutionize what you're doing, if you want to completely topple the bad habits you've had for the last few decades, we can help you. So with that, it has been a pleasure to talk to you today and share our thoughts. We're looking forward to our next interaction. And until then, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.